Hey guys, I'm glad to have you on here tonight. Uh, appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to go over just really briefly what we have on the calendar for March, since this is the first time we've really talked with each other um, in a team Zoom setting since March, but then I'm going to quickly turn it over to our guest speaker tonight because I'm really excited about what she's going to teach you guys tonight. Can everybody hear me? Make sure I'm not blabbering. Okay. Okay. So, um, if you have not looked into the super silver promo, that's something that's corporately sponsored incentive that's going on right now for the month of March. It's excellent. It's all over the team page, or you can read an email. You probably got an email. Um, you can read the email that gives the, the details of what that means. For sake of time, I'm going to let you do that on your own, okay? Um, the Canada registration for registering for the Canada launch, they always give us really good incentives or there's always something special that comes along with a registration like that. It's free to register. If you haven't registered, you need to look for that on our team page and um, register for that because you don't want to miss out on that. That's the worst thing ever is when people are like, I didn't do Super Saturday, now what? I'm like, I, I done told you. That's all I know to say. I done told you to do that. Why did you not? So, okay. I don't like feeling that way after the fact. That's why I'm so preemptive. Register. Uh, and last, as far as March goes, we have just our own team calendar, which I'm going to go through with you very quickly. If you're looking for it, <laughs> Jetty's being a dork. If you're looking for the team calendar, it is at the top. It's the cover photo in our team page. Um, if I mean, if you're looking, trying to figure out where it is, that's where it is. Um, the gut health group starts next Monday, but also next week on Tuesday, we'll have an online online launch. So the gut health group is just going to last Monday to Friday. It's already pre-recorded. It's already post my party. It's set up and ready to go. Um, if you add someone to that group, they need to be currently using the triplex, either as a customer or ambassador. I don't care. Um, and you know, obviously it needs to be new people because we do that. We do that almost every month. We have the gut health group. If you're not familiar what that is, it's a, it's a video every single day. Monday through Friday, a short video of me explaining something, um, little known facts about gut health and why the gut, gut health helps the immune system and why disease happens and all this kind of stuff. It just kind of gives people a better grip on understanding what our products do, but also it gives people a, um, makes pe but since I mentioned so many possibilities with health, it makes people think of other people they should maybe talk to the, about the products. So if it's a new ambassador or a customer, we want our customers in those groups um, if, they're, if they're trying the triplex. Uh, also the 19th through the 23rd, which is gonna be the following week, a Monday through Friday, we're gonna do a repeat of the, it's gonna be exact same information of last month's learn and earn group, which is like, it's just the steps to go through from your first fa Facebook post, those beginner steps. Um, it was a, it was, it worked out to be a really great group last, last week. That was the last time we, I mean, sorry, last month was the first time we ever did it. Um, so as far as events go, they're all stacked on top of each other this time. The gut health group starts the 12th and there's a launch the next night. One of the, our seven o'clock things where it's just an hour, you guys, I'm thinking everybody on here knows what these things are, but uh, sure enough, somebody will send me a message later that cause I didn't explain that the online launch is just a short event where, where a few of us give live testimonies. We give away great prizes. If you want to participate in that and you don't know how to invite people, there is a file in our team page called momentum or need momentum, something like that. And it'll give you some good ideas about how to post on your wall and get people who might want to join in on our online launch. That will be <clears throat> the 13th. And of course, every Wednesday night we do these calls at 830 Central. So tonight, um, my team can tell you, this is my, I don't know if you guys can see my friend Francesca. I'm hoping I'm saying your name right. I didn't even think about asking you. Okay. So <laughs> if, I hope you guys can see my new friend Francesca here who has joined us tonight. Um, I saw a post in one of our groups about people who had implemented or she had spoken to about this new thing that she's doing, uh, an approach to, um, how to intentionally network, 
right? And I was just reading the comments and I got very caught up in it because I was like, this is something that I think most people think either you're good at it or you're not, but I think it's something you can be taught to do well. And so I'm excited to have someone. Uh, what I started to say, Francesca, is I can, I think I can count on one hand how many times I've ever had a guest speaker on my call and we do these every single week. Just want you to know that because of the fact that it's like every single thing I think I'll just, I don't want to bother anybody or, or sometimes I don't want to expose people to other people, to be honest with you. That's usually the, in the driving force. Sometimes though, it's like, I'll just learn that and I'll teach it. But I was so impressed with what everyone was saying about your information. Uh, Francesca is a, you're an Emerald. Is this true? This is what your Facebook said. I wanted to make sure that's right. Sometimes a rank up happens and you don't, you know, update your Facebook, but I wanted to make sure, <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm prophesying that for you. And, um, and are you from Irving, Texas? Is that right here? I'm going to unmute you. I'm from Richardson, Texas. Richardson, Texas. Okay. I don't know where I got Irving in my head. So, um, anyway, I'm going to turn it over to you. We're really, I, I told you this earlier, but I'm going to repeat myself. We're a really like relaxed group. Um, we're going to drink this information up because we'll be excited to hear what you have to say. And there's actually no pressure. So just tell us whatever you want to tell us. <laughs> I'm going to take notes. Awesome. Hi, guys. My name is Francesca Fields. I am an Emerald Ambassador from Richardson, Texas. Um, I've been with Plexus. I just celebrated my third anniversary. what do we call it? <laughs> Anniversary, birthday, whatever, uh, on January 10th. So I've been with Plexus for about three years. Um, and I started not to start a business. That was definitely not my intention. Um, I, I started mainly for health reasons. I was 20 years old the first time I got um, the news that my cholesterol was high. I was training for a marathon. I was very fit, um, but I treated my body with how I ate very, very poorly, um, mainly because I had a high metabolism and I, I didn't gain weight. And so I could eat whatever I wanted. I could be skinny. And um, I just thought that that was awesome. Uh, it wasn't. <laughs> I was 20 the first time I got the news that I had high cholesterol. My mom almost died because she was like, this is not in our family. Like, what are you doing to your body? Um, and I, I really tried to Hold on. Somebody said something. Oh, somebody can't hear. Can y'all hear me? Can yes. everybody else hear me? Okay, good. I thought I heard somebody say they couldn't hear, so I got worried. Um, and so I had tried at that point to manage um, what I ate because the list they gave me of things that I couldn't eat was literally my diet. So it was very overwhelming and I just, I couldn't do it. So um, went on about that for, you know, I think I was 27 when I got pregnant the first time. Um, I've been married to my husband for about eight years. We have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and I'm currently 23 weeks pregnant, um, expecting in July. Um, and the first pregnancy that I had was extremely difficult. I think pretty much just the way I treated my body caught up to me at that point. I had a very difficult pregnancy. Um, and was just told over and over again that once I had the baby that things would just go back to normal and I'd feel better. Super far from the truth, I had my daughter Everly, who like I said is four, and was struck with some pretty bad postpartum depression, um, very low milk supply, fatigue that I can't even describe, uh, just a really dark time in my life and I really struggled. I felt very alone and um, just once again, felt very overwhelmed with the concept of just completely overhauling my habits that I had had my whole, my entire life. And I went to the doctor um, when she was about a year old and got my labs taken. I just did my annual, you know, checkup. And they called me about two days later and they said, okay, so we're at the point now where your cholesterol is, it, it, it has to come down or it needs to be managed with medication. Um, and for some reason, I feel like we all have this moment where we just hit that, that desperation, that bottom where, um, and I think it happens in a lot of different areas of our life. But for me, it was it, with my health, it was, uh, being threatened with medication before the age of 30. 
when I was a breastfeeding mom, I wanted to have more kids. I felt fully, um, I don't know. I just, it was really a shocking blow to me. Um, and it's the point where I said, something's got to change, but I didn't know what it was. And so, um, I'm have a well, I love that y'all start with worship music. I have a very close relationship with the Lord, and so um, I pretty much take everything that I do or need or feel to Him. And so that was something that um, I took to Him because I just felt really overwhelmed and really desperate. And my sister in law had been posting about Plexus for about six months. She's the only person I knew that I, I had no idea what Plexus was until she was posting about it. And the only thing I thought was that it was a weight loss gimmick, that it was a scam, that it was a pyramid scheme, that it was, I mean, she'd come to family functions and I'd be like, don't talk about plexus, don't talk about plexus. Like, I would be so nervous that it would even come up in conversation because like, you know those people, right? <laughs> they just attack you. Um, and so I was just really praying that that would never come up. But my best friend who had a baby just around the time that I did, um, had decided that she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Uh, I had quit my job. I have my master's in social work um, and worked with abuse kids for a long time. And when I had my daughter, I decided that I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And so I quit my job, which uh, was totally and completely what God wanted us to do. It was um, exactly what I was supposed to do, but it also put us in a little bit of a, um, a financial situation that was just a little tighter than what we were used to. And so um, when she said, I'm looking for a stay at home job, you know, that I can make $500 a month, I'm looking at a bunch of different network marketing companies. Do you have any suggestions? And I said, well, my sister-in-law sells Plexus if you want me to hook you up with her. And she's like, yeah, that'd be great. So I hooked them up and it just so happened to be um, that opportunity event before Super Saturday. Uh, and so my sister-in-law, which hello, could change your entire business. <laughs> my sister-in-law took my best friend to this. She signed up that night, called me the next morning and said, this can help your cholesterol. And I was like, girl, you are crazy. <laughs> that, this is a weight loss. And she's like, no, you are completely misinformed. This can help you. And I, like I said, y'all, I was at that point of desperation and it was the right time for me to be approached about this. And so um, I signed up for the wholesale pricing. I was not going to sell. I was very adamant with them about that. The day I signed up, like, I'm not going to post on Facebook. Nobody in my network's going to buy something that costs a hundred dollars. I mean, I just had all these different things and something, um, in me, uh, just really impressed that it was, uh, something that I needed to do to share my journey. Um, I, I got sober when I was 16 years old. I've been in recovery. I'm almost 31. So I celebrated 14 years of sobriety in October. Um, and I just kind of grew up in this culture from 16 on of vulnerability and transparency and the ultimate principle that if you serve others and if you put others needs in front of your own, your needs will get met. And the reason I say this to y'all now is because um, I felt like uh, it was just really impressed upon me that this was another avenue for me to be helpful. And that even though I was really, really scared <laughs> and didn't want to be that girl or get blocked on Facebook or get unfriended, that it was something that I needed to do to serve other people. And so before I even got my welcome pack, I know I probably blindsided the you know what out of my, my sister-in-law and my best friend because I posted on Facebook and I was just completely honest. This was before compliance, so you could say whatever you wanted. But I, I told everyone like, hey, I'm struggling with cholesterol. And yeah, that's shocking to you guys because I've always been under 110 pounds and y'all think I'm really healthy, but I'm not. And I struggle with postpartum depression and I've really struggled with being a mom for the last year. And I'm, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that. And I struggle with carbs and sugar and I'm a sugar addict. And I just was really, really honest and told everybody, like I've been presented with this solution. Um, and I, I want to keep you guys informed on my journey. Y'all wouldn't believe the messages I got. 
I got messages from friends who were like, oh my gosh, I've been too embarrassed to say, but I'm a mom and I'm depressed too. And I, I don't feel like I have the right to say I'm depressed, but here you are saying you're depressed and you're a mom. And do you think this could help me? And other people like, God, I've been so embarrassed to say that my cholesterol is high too. And my doctors want me on meds and just, it opened up this, uh, avenue for me to be a servant in a, in a different way. And so that kind of got me, um, you know, it's hard going from social work was my position and I was really, really, I felt really valuable and I was doing really helpful, hard things to being a stay at home mom who stayed in their yoga pants all day and like clean, you know, <laughs> poopy diapers, which is a really important job, but it's, it's very different. I just got this, like, I was like, we're like, wow, energized. Like this is a, this is a completely new avenue for me to feel uh, like I'm contributing something to somebody. And so I wasn't fully bought into the business. It was more at that point of just like, you know, I signed everybody up as preferred, which is totally great. My paycheck was awesome. Um, but I wasn't fully bought into like, I want to be diamond or anything at that point. But, um, I had a sip and see at my house, a uh, launch party. I don't know what y'all call them, but uh, just you invite all your friends over and everybody taste the pink drink and there's a PowerPoint on the products and um, just, you know, really fun. And I had one at my house and my diamond ambassador, Rosalind Payne showed up and it really, something about um, <clears throat> what she said breathed like this new vision into me. And um, it was really cool seeing her Lexus. I was like, wow, that's awesome. And just hearing what the company, like what the opportunity had done as far as financial freedom for her family. Um, it really was presented in a way where I thought, okay, this could be for me. Like, I, I think I could probably try to do this. So, um, that kind of started my journey of like, okay, I'm, I'm now I'm bought in. Like I, I caught the vision. I was all in. And, um, there was one thing that I was not willing to do. And that was message people. I was not willing to message people. <laughs> I was not going to do that. And I, I was pretty lucky to the, the point where I could post on Facebook and get a lot of people interested. And maybe that's you or maybe that's not you. I don't know. But at some point, that stops. And at some point, you cap out. You can't, you can't rely on that forever. It's gonna, you're you're going to cap out somewhere. And maybe that's okay with you. Like maybe you're okay capping out. But if you truly have the vision to take this to the top and really experience that financial freedom, you've got to do more. And it's, it's got to be uncomfortable. It's got to sting a little bit. So I was a year and a half into my, my journey working what I consider to be really, really hard. And I was a senior gold ambassador, uh, senior gold. I mean, I was like dipping below and sometimes close and then dipping below. And I can't even tell you how many days a week I'd call my upline my sister-in-law who bless her heart had to take my phone call because I'm her sister-in-law um, and just go on and on and on about how my team wasn't working and my points weren't moving and why isn't anybody adding and blah, 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 blah. And I promise you, she probably muted me and like went on about her business, but um, I was so negative and I just, um, I, I was just, I felt stuck. Like that's the word I kept using. So I was watching a training video one day. I remember where I was sitting on my couch and it hit me. I mean, like literally like a ton of bricks. It hit me that, um, that I, as a leader of, I was a senior gold ambassador. I had a team under me and I, as a leader was, uh, all I was doing was focusing on what my team was or was not doing. And I was actually telling them to do stuff that I myself was not doing. And so my integrity was not there. Cause I was like, Hey, five, three, one, y'all reach out to five people a day. <laughs> I wasn't doing that. <laughs> I was not doing that. And I was telling them to do that and they could probably see right through it. And so it, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm, uh, something that I feel like I've developed well over the years is self-discipline. And once I commit and make a commitment to myself to do something, I feel like I can, um, carry that out pretty well. During that call, uh, I, that training video is just a YouTube video. I decided uh, and made a commitment to myself that that was the last day that I was going to focus on what my team was or was not doing. And it was going to be the first day that I was going to be my own rock star, no matter what. Um, whether my team was coming with me or not, 
I was going to try as best I could to take myself to the top. Um, and not in a sense of like, I'm doing this on my own, but in a sense of like, this is, this is my dream. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this is not their dream. This is my dream. This is my future and my family. Um, and I made that commitment and that was a year and a half ago. And I have kept that commitment to myself, um, every single month since then. Um, and so around this time I had, um, well, I had joined these moms groups on Facebook when I was pregnant with my four year old. So, um, when I had first, I didn't have Facebook for a really long time, you guys. And when I joined Plexus, I only had like 400 friends and I was not very active on social media. Um, and so th that's also something I've had to develop and learn over the years. But I was in this mom's group where it was a bunch of moms who um, were pregnant and due the same month in the same year. So January 2014 moms, that was the group. And we walked through pregnancy together. We walked through birth together. We walked through um, the first year together and uh, we got really close with each other. And so it was just an invaluable resource to me. And when I got pregnant with my two-year-old, I joined the same group. By the way, my cholesterol went down into normal ranges within two months of Plexus. I always forget to tell the good stuff. I'm like, everything sucked and I posted on Facebook, okay? But no, it's, it all got good. Like, we're, we're good now. Had an awesome pregnancy. My second pregnancy was amazing. I had no postpartum depression. My milk supply was stellar like this little baby had neck rolls that I had to clean out or like weird things started growing in there like it we had a good experience <laughs> so Plexus just completely changed my life health wise it's been really easy to share that and a lot of people have seen that in me so things are good okay <laughs> um I joined a group the same kind of group for my two-year-old so it's like December 2015 moms and we got really really close and one day I was in church and I checked my phone and I had hundreds of friend requests from these moms in this group. And I was like, what is going on? This is awesome. And I went to the group and somebody in there had been like, you guys, we've been friends for a year. Like, I feel so close to you. Y'all are my sisters. I want to see your babies on my newsfeed. Do y'all want to be Facebook friends? And it just started this like friending, like craze in this group. And I was like, okay, cool. It still did not like click with me that this was like, a really good thing for my business. It was just like, wow, okay, cool. And um, during that training call that I told you guys, things kind of shifted for me. Um, I had, I think the, I think the diamond in the video had suggested doing this, but um, regardless, I at that moment googled a blank calendar and printed off a Google blank calendar of like sixty days and um, printed that off. I downloaded my Facebook friends list off of Facebook. If you don't know how to do that, there's tons of YouTube videos on it and it's really simple. But I downloaded my Facebook friends off of, um, off of Facebook, put it into an Excel, and literally got that blank calendar out and started writing five names a day from my Facebook list onto my calendar. And I made the commitment to myself that I would not go to bed any night without messaging those five people on that calendar. And what I started to notice was most of the people that I was writing down at this point, cause I'm a year and a half in y'all. So I'm a year and a half into this, most of the people that I was in my warm market had already tried Plexus or come to me. And so most of the people that I needed to reach out to were from this mom's group that I hadn't reached out to before. And I had, um, so I started writing five names a day on my calendar and I, I wrote out two months worth of this, I think, or 45 days or something like that. And I was so nervous to message people that I constructed this cold message and ran it by two of my really good friends who um, were not in Plexus. So it was like an objective, like opinion on what my message was and like I mean you would have thought I was working on like a science project of like getting this cold message because that's how nervous I was like this is how out of my comfort zone this was and we came up with this message they helped me do it um they were like yeah I'd feel I'd, I'd totally not I'd like be okay if I got this message from some person on Facebook about their products like yes this is a good one so felt comfortable with that but it was literally it was really simple it was just um 
hey, blah, blah, blah. And I would always go to their Facebook page before I messaged them to make sure like a dog hadn't died or like a kid wasn't in the hospital. Like just make sure like things are cool for me to <laughs> message them about Plexus. But I would check their page. Um, I'd get a little in information about what was going on currently in their life. And I would just say like, um, hey girl, I love following you and your beautiful family on Facebook, like insert something personal. Um, I, I'm sure you've seen my Plexus posts and how much I love these products. I really want to share the love. Would you be at all interested in some information or a sample question mark? That was it. That's all I'd send. I wouldn't go into like my testimony or my life change. I, that's all I would say. I would just put it out there and offer them information or a sample. And I started sending this message out. This was in May or June, 2016. Um, because I remember I was still super nervous in Vegas for a convention about doing this. Um, it was still pretty new for me, but that's when I had started and I started getting great, great response. And, uh, I think, um, by the time October rolled around, I was a Ruby, I went Ruby, uh, during that double, double, uh, bonus promotion month. If, if any of y'all are around for that. And so I want you guys to see that um, I started planting those seeds and within what five months like I started seeing things happening and my team started to catch on to what that I was actually in in action and it really clicked with me that this I was on to something with expanding my network through Facebook groups because I'm in Texas you guys and I know y'all are I don't know if y'all are all in the south with us but um People know about Plexus here, and I was getting people from all over the U.S. who had never heard of Plexus. It was a complete novelty to them. I've got, I think, like maybe five or six people in Canada now. I've got a customer in it's Australia or New Zealand. I should probably know that. I can't remember. Uh, but these are all from Facebook groups, from from my mom's groups. And so I was like, okay, like we're on to something here. And so I did the same thing with my January mom's group that we had been together for like three years. I just made a simple post of like, do y'all want to be friends? We've known each other for so long. If you want to be friends, comment yes below. And I expanded again by like two, 300 people. And so I was, I, I said, okay, I need to start from scratch. I need to get myself involved in a group where I am coming in, just not knowing anybody and, and how, what is this process going to look like? Because I wanted it to be something that I could continue to do. Um, forever because it, it just and it was just an awesome thing that was happening so I decided at that point to look into um, joining another group for my two-year-old um, so I looked up more like December 2015 moms groups and I found one that was under a thousand members um, and I'll get really specific with you guys about what I look for I look for groups that are under a thousand members that um, because if it's over a thousand members you're going to get lost. Um, it's, it's too big. There are a lot of groups out there that are easy to join that are like 10, 20,000 members, but you guys like, there's no way you're going to get connected in a group that big. Um, and I look for groups that are active. So I've joined groups before where it's like, nobody's posted in a month. That is not a group where people want to connect with other people. Like it's, that's, it's just not an active group. It's not a group where people are actively building relationships. And so I found this group that was like, 800 members, which is even a little bit bigger than what I would um, recommend at first, but, and it was an active group. And so I, I got into this group and the first thing that I did um, was I got a picture of my family and we don't take fancy ones, but it was a picture of us and I put it up and I just said, I'm Francesca Fields. I'm from Richardson, Texas. I'm 30 years old. These are my two kids. This is my husband. Um, this is kind of a little bit about our life. I'm really excited to connect with other moms. Um, who are y'all? Like, who are you? Like, I want to get to know you. And so many people posted pictures of their family. They explained who they were. And I just took time and I went through every single one and I replied to their comments. I'm so excited to get to connect with you, et cetera. Um, and I put it into my IPA every day, became very intentional about, and if you're just starting to do this, I would only do one or two groups to start. Okay. Don't overwhelm yourself with joining like 10 different groups. Like you're not going to be effective if you do that. I also want to say 
that this is not an overnight process. Um, I think a lot of times we want something to be like, I joined a group and now I've signed up 10 ambassadors. This is not the process for you if that's what you're looking for. There might, there's probably a way that you could do this and make it happen faster, but this is the way I've done it and this is the way that I've built uh, a solid foundation with people um, just based really solidly on trust, relationship, friendship, connection to where when Plexus does come up, uh, they trust me. They know me. They know my character. And I'm not just some weirdo joining a group to get sales. Like, this is how I do that. So it, this whole process could take me four to six months. I just want you guys to know that. But this is something that you will have to commit to, you will have to be consistent with, and you will really have to discipline yourself to put in the, the time and the action for it. But y'all, I promise you, it's worth it. It is worth it. Three years into my Plexus journey, I am still signing up 10 people a month. Um, and that's, that is because of what I am doing with these groups and that, um, that consistency and that time. And also I want to say the reason why this is so important is because we are all here working through our warm market. Um, but if you are not at the same time as you are doing that, warming up your cold market to immediately move into the place of your warm market once it dries up, you are going to go through a very dry and stagnant time in your business and it's not going to feel good. And so you want to be really intentional. I say you, I'm speaking very generally. Um, but for me, at least I, what I learned was that I needed to be really intentional about making sure as soon as my warm market was up, I had another warm market just ready to go right in that place. And so um, I'm pregnant now. I am in the trenches with you guys doing this in a bunch of mom groups right now. Um, just, and it's really exciting to me now because I know what my year is going to look like. Um, and the latter half of my year is going to be amazing because of this. Um, so anyways, I joined this group and I, I make that post. I introduced myself and then I make it a really intentional part of my day to go to this group and make a post of value whether it's um so for me I joined mom's groups um so I would you know if I found a pouch of a baby pouch that was really clean ingredients and my kids really liked the way it tasted I would post a picture of that and just be like hey mamas I found this pouch and it's it's awesome and it's clean and I just wanted to, to pass this on to you or hey there's a diaper deal at Walmart like y'all go get some diapers this is awesome or just trying to you know, make posts of value. Or if I couldn't think of a post that day and uh, what I would do anyways is I would scroll through this group and make comments on as many posts as I could. I made sure to be an encouraging, loving member of the group, um, trying to always add some sort of value, whether that's, um, you know, I'm praying for you or offering advice or offering encouragement or um, even just being really funny and lightening the mood, whatever it was, like, my intention was to connect with people and to be somebody that people started to recognize and trust, um, especially as somebody who uh, tried to serve others, if that makes sense. Um, and so um, that's what I would do. And I would do that. I would do that process for about two months, uh, maybe a little bit longer. I just, you know, if you're working on one group, it probably would take about two months to get to that point. And then um, either I've gained friendships where I've, we friended each other along the way. And then that can kind of snowball into like finding mutual friends that y'all have in the group and just like rolling off of that or um, making a post in the group. Hey y'all, we have been, I mean, I've really enjoyed getting to know you guys. I feel like we're, we're real friends. Like I feel like I know you outside of Facebook. Um, I really would love to see your babies on my newsfeed. If you're okay being friended, comment below and let's have a friending party. Um, and then just expanding that way. And, um, and I've added hundreds of people in this new group that I was telling you guys that I, that I joined and expanded again by a lot of people. And um, what I would do, so my process, what it turned into once I friended people, because it's easy when you're friending that many people, you don't want them to get lost 
on your Facebook. Um, and as y'all probably know, I love um, friending sideline sisters. And so um, I love friending other plexus people and, and um, being one plexus. But uh, I also had to be intentional about, about building this relationship outside of the Facebook group. And so uh, I decided that once I friended them, once they became my Facebook friend, I would usually send them just a quick little message like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to connect with you guys. This is going to be so fun. Um, and then I created a separate friends list for them. Now, I would try to explain how to do this. Um, but if, if you're on your laptop and you go to Facebook and you go to the homepage and on the side, that sidebar, there should be something that says friends list and you click that and then you can create new. And you can actually create a list of people that you choose that where you, I'm so sorry, excuse me, where you click that list and the only people's news feeds you're going to see are the people on that list. And so I created a list and I just called it mamas or new mamas or something. And I put all of these people onto this distribution list. And so then what, what, um, at, on top of networking in a group, it became a part of my IPA to click that list of mamas when I got on Facebook and just start commenting on their stuff and just getting myself um, really connected with them there. If it was a picture of their cute little baby, just saying like, oh my gosh, your baby is so cute. Or uh, commenting, not liking, like actually making a comment and connecting with them. If they were having a hard day, like I'm praying for you, can I do anything for you? If it was a situation where I felt like I could message them, I would just say like, I'm so sorry y'all are sick. Like I'm praying for y'all. Here's what I found that helps. And rarely would I mention Plexus before, uh, before I'd been friends with them and connected with them for about two months. A lot of times people would come to me because like I said, I'm expanding all over the US. And so people would be like, Plexus, what's Plexus? And Francesca does plexus. I, I know Francesca. She's never mentioned this and I trust her. And like, what is this? What's, what's going on? And so, but if they didn't do that, I would connect with them for two months just by being really intentional on commenting on their stuff, getting my name out there, becoming somebody that they recognized and liked. And then, um, about two months or so later, I, I would, um, uh, message them. And there's two different things that I like to do when I message. The first one is that cold message that I, um, and we say cold message. It's not a cold message. Like you'd think it's a warm message. These are people that I've been connecting with for six, you know, four to six months. They, we have a relationship. They know me. Maybe we've never messaged on Facebook back and forth, but they know my name and they know my character. Um, so when I say cold message, it's not just some random person. I have tried that and it doesn't work as well, <laughs> um, but this works really well. So uh, I, there's two things I like to do. I like to send them that message that I just told y'all about, um, offering them information or a sample, or I also really, really like to invite people to online Facebook events. So our team has a testimony page where we, every other week, we do um, a Facebook online information event. Um, most teams do that. I don't know how y'all structure yours, but ours is every other week. And so it gives me an opportunity every other week to invite a bunch of people to join my testimony page and learn about the Plex products. And so I say, Hey girl, I am sending out some last minute invites for, um, a Plexus Facebook event that I'm hosting. It's no sales. It's just information and prizes. Would you like an invite? Um, and people usually say yes, even if they don't want to, <laughs> they're like, how do I say no to this? I don't know. So I'm just going to say yes, which is awesome because it, they get put into this group and they just start getting exposure to the amazing things Plexus can do. And I think it just starts to plant some seeds of curiosity. Um, and if somebody does say no, which has happened, um, never rudely, but you know, people just saying, oh, thanks for thinking of me. No, thank you. Um, I just, I say, thank you know, you're so welcome. If you ever change your mind, let me know. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And then for me, that's a little bit of a red flag to pursue them a little bit harder in my connection relationship with them. I can't tell you how many no's have come back to yeses 
how I've got a girl on my team who uh, is a business builder who was like, uh, yeah, Plexus just isn't for me. And now she like, she loves Plexus. It's changed her life. And it's just because when she said no, that was not the end of our relationship. And that was just the beginning. And I, I continued to pursue her in that sense. So um, those are the two ways that I like to approach people um, when it's time for me to talk to them about Plexus. So let's talk about, not everyone on here is going to be a young mom. Not everybody is in that life stage. Y'all, we're in all sorts of different life stages. So you're probably like, well, what groups can I join? <laughs> um, think about, we should all be posting on Facebook that has nothing to do with Plexus, right? Like we should all be posting. I, if I post three times a day, once is about Plexus and twice is my life stage is young kids. It's uh, working out. It's pregnancy. Those are kind of my passions and interests outside of Plexus. And that's very apparent on my Facebook page. What is it on yours? What's your passion outside of Plexus that you post about often? And the reason I say that is because when you do connect with these people in this group and you do bring them onto your personal Facebook page, they need to see the connection of what y'all originally had in common. So that needs to be apparent to them so that you can continue that relationship. So think about it. Like, do you post about your dog a lot? Or do you, um, are you a homeschooling mom? Or are you a vegan? Or do you CrossFit? Like, what is your passion? And that's the group you want to find. Um, if it's something where you like search for homeschooling moms and you get groups that have like 50,000 people in it, just get more specific. What area of town are you in? So for me, it would be like Richardson homeschooling moms or, um, you know, some Texas homeschooling moms or something. Just try to start paring it down to some more specific things to where it's going to be smaller, smaller groups of people. Um, and look for those groups that are a little bit smaller and that are active. People are actively posting and trying to connect with other people in there. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything or if y'all have any questions. I have some commentary. I don't know if yeah. it's questions, but um, I was thinking about, I, I, one of the questions I was going to ask you was when, when you are first adding these people as friends from a group, is that when you add them to the new list as you're doing that, you're putting them, you're specifying what, create the what list you've created that you, they go to true yeah because it just helps me stay more organized and them not get lost somewhere in my Facebook friends list that's how my brain was playing it out but I thought that may have been crossed someone's mind I don't know how she did that or what you know um I was thinking about the fact that when I started with Plexus um something that I had in my favor and I've kind of always in my mind thought I don't know if that's as duplicatable as other things, but it, you know, it was one of those things in my mind and what it was is I already had a huge following from a, another business, but it was a, my photography business. But as I'm looking at it through these lenses tonight, I'm thinking to myself, that's just, it was just an interest of mine. I mean, people would add me because I would take pictures at their wedding, but the same type of principle, um, falls in, into this having common interests with people having you know like all the different ideas you talked about i've seen people um well i've seen people including myself i've even joined groups of people groups of people who talk about their sickness that's a tough crowd by the way <laughs> i'm just gonna just say if you want to add if you want to add i used to say tell people if you want to find the sick people go in the sick people groups well here's the thing toughest crowd there is and this is this is so much more brilliant than that because you're not first of all you're not going to get like opposing personalities coming at you about things and I wanted to clarify something just to make sure you guys know she's not saying that you post anything about Plexus in the group I, no. I, I know that's <laughs> exactly, that. <laughs> exactly the opposite of what she's saying but just in case there's any confusion she's saying Get them outside the group, get them in your friends list, and then just naturally let them be exposed to it. And over time, she's private messaging them after she's warmed them up. To me, it, to me, the way you described it, it comes very natural to the, my understanding because I do a lot of this myself. Um, 
but I just, I wanted to make sure <laughs> that everybody's understanding because the worst thing you can do in one of those groups, and I've done it before, is to post about, post something about Plexus because they don't like that. People don't like to be sold in a group that, sold to in a group, within their group. And the other thing I thought about, and then I, I'll see if anybody else has any questions, but um, the majority of the people in Plexus, and I think you're probably saying the same thing too, they, they will open up some sort of door for you, or many of the people that joined my team in the beginning had come to me, and that comes back to, I mean, I think that comes back to being the thing you talked about in the very beginning, vulnerability. If you're very salesy on your page, you can add a thousand new friends in the sales tactic tactics. We have a way, way smart consumer average. Uh, the, your average consumer is like very smart. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, okay, hang on a second. Let me see if somebody had, I just thought I heard a question just now pop up. The cool part about that I was wanting to highlight is she was saying, um, she's making friends from all over the United States and even in other countries. The coolest part about that is, is we have so many areas that are so completely untapped that as you as you sponsor one new person, like me, me, uh, the a lady that sponsored me was from, where is she from? Like Mississippi or uh, somewhere Florida, in the Florida. Florida, Florida. That's right. And um, when she sponsored, she didn't even know she was sponsoring me. She could have drugged me out of one of those groups. She didn't know. And as I signed up, you know, I opened up a whole new territory as her team um, because of the fact no one had ever heard of it around here. So there's the, the beauty of pulling someone out of a Facebook group and having that you have something in common with. And I, there's so many aspects to it. So does anybody have any questions, though? Wait. What if someone in the group asks a question and something about Plexus is the answer? I'm, I'm going to give you my opinion, then I'm going to let Francesca give you her opinion. I don't think you should ever say the P word in a group. The only way you should say it is maybe if you wanted to private message them and just tell them, you know, something about, you know, do you take probiotics or something along those lines, something that would be in line with what they asked. You have to be careful. Now I'm going to ask you if that, do you agree with that, Francesca? 100%. So some of the groups that I've been in now for like four years. Uh, yeah, I would, I would probably say that. But I told you guys, I'm 23 weeks pregnant. I'm in a ton of moms groups. What do pregnant moms struggle with? Pooping and like paid and sleep. And I have obviously have solutions to that. And so whenever a mom says, um, oh my gosh, what are y'all doing for constipation? I'll just say, I'm taking magnesium and probiotics. And I, somebody the other day had to pull it out of me. No, what brand are you? No, no. What brand are you taking? Like, which one are you taking? And I just said, if you want to know, message me. Um, I would not say it in that group. Um, because it instantly disqualifies you. I mean, it, it just like puts a red flag over you. Of like, Oh yeah. Okay. Plexus person or, Oh, MLM or direct sales. Um, and even like there's a, there, sometimes they'll bring up working from home in different direct sales companies. And I will not mention, I'll, I will tell them the story of how it's changed my life, but I will purposefully not say I'm with Plexus. Yeah. I will then at the end say, you need to find something that you are passionate about that you can get behind. Um, and that's it. Like I, I won't, I won't say it, especially in a group full of people that I haven't connected with yet. Cause it, it will disqualify you um, if you do that. Discredit you, not disqualify. We're not in a race. <laughs> Discredit you. <laughs> Someone asked, um, the, the, I want to explain something. I'm going to reiterate something she's already said, but you're, you're not going to just send out random friend requests. She made a post inside the group that opened it up in a friendly way, <laughs> basically saying, you know, we know each other. We've begin, been getting to know each other for this amount of time, whatever. And are any of you open to, she's very warm with her presentation of it. Or if, if any of you would like to be, you know, friends on Facebook, um, very with a, I, I thought the way you said it was perfect. In fact, I thought I'll just go back later and write it down. But the, seriously, I don't want to exactly word for word someone else, but I thought the way she said it was perfect. Are any, any of you who are open to be in friends, say me in the comments or whatever. And at that point, you've been given permission to send a friend request or vice versa. 
is that what yeah. you're is that what you're feeling right Francesca me oh yeah there's with this method there's no like gimmicks and no gotchas like nobody feels like they just got sharked off this page it's it's been a gradual connection a gradual relationship um and asking them like who I, I love connecting with y'all who wants to be friends like if you're okay being my friend say yes and um just doing just doing it that way so they don't ever feel like I just went through and I've done that before too um and it doesn't work very well <laughs> it does not produce great results <laughs> so this is the way I found that's been really um really fruitful I yeah I I think it's perfect to me I'm very um relationship sensitive probably yellow. I'm not sure really where I fall in it, but like very relationship sensitive. And so like what, lots of times when I run through so something through the goggles of would I have gone for that? It almost always, I see things and I think, Oh no, I would not have gone for that. But everything you have said tonight, quite honestly, I've thought, yeah, I would have, I would have sent her a friend request. I probably would have read her post. I would have warmed up to it by the time she ever reached out at least the idea of it because the cool thing about this is we're not sell we're selling something that actually changes people's lives and people have stories to tell about it. So sharing that kind of information is, is vital. Does anybody have, I feel like we've answered the questions that they've had so far. Does anybody have something? I don't want to leave anything out. I do want to ask those of you who are on here, are you getting some ideas of groups that you need to add yourself to? I'm hoping. Huh? Yeah. Hobbies and interests and, she even, I mean, like thinking of how old your kids are and like what group though, I thought that was great. I've never even thought of that my own self. I have a homeschooling mom's group that is very inactive, you know, <laughs> so I need to do better with that group, but, um, any other questions? No, my, I don't know why my group is being quiet and pretending tonight. They're pretending to be a quiet bunch. <laughs> <laughs> They're, um, Okay, someone asked if the friends list that you make are specific or just non-plexus. Mine have been specific. So um, I, I had a friends list called Mamas, and then I had a friends list called New Mamas because I did a new group. Mm -hmm. And then I even, um, I kind of failed at this. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. But even last month, I tried to do something different where I put my February pranks into a distribution list I had gone through and um, kind of chose the people that I was going to try to be really intentional about connecting with in February and put them onto a separate distribution list so that I could, I could go and, and comment on their stuff exclusively. So yeah, it's, um, you can make it whatever you want. It can be whatever you want. My, my goal with it was just to not let those people get lost in my Facebook and with all my awesome sideline sisters and all my team members posts, but just to know that I could go straight to them and connect with them without, um, going through the jumbled stuff of everything else. Yeah. I, I was thinking, um, for those of you who are on here and you're like, wait, I got lost on any point of this. Like if you don't know how to make the, the friends list, if you don't know how to do any of these pieces that you don't know how to do. Don't let that stop you. Let me know after this is over. I'll make some videos. We'll walk through it together so that you get the most, if you're going to go to the trouble to do it, you don't want to be messing up the parts that are going to really mess you up. Okay. So don't be, don't be hesitant to ask. We'll figure out, I'll figure out a way that I can do a live and also show you my computer at the same time or whatever. I, I want to highlight, first of all, I, first of all, I want to thank you, Francesca, but I also want to highlight like, I want to come back in and say, yes, I want to pin a blue ribbon on everything that she said tonight because of the fact that you can work this business a lot harder ways. <laughs> Hers is methodical and relational. These are the words I'm going to give it. There's a method to it. So it's not, there's not a harem scarum throwing mud against the wall. She has a method to it. She's having, she's having to put the IPA in that she's going to put those every single day that what she does is she knows what she's going to do tomorrow before it gets here. So this may not be going to maybe won't fit everybody's personality, but I will tell you in the beginning, if I had had someone to tell me 
and give me this exact method, even though I'm um, scattered and not organized and all these things, even though I would have used this because of the fact that I don't like cold messaging people. It's against everything. It makes me want to like pull the gross off of myself thinking <laughs> about cold messaging someone. And I know that it's not completely effective. Like cold messaging is not, you have to be, it's a different personality type than what so many of you on my team are that can just cold message. And when they get told no, come back again. And that's not, it doesn't fit anything that fits in even with my core values. It makes me go, Ooh, this, if you will put the time in and put the method to work to me, it's like, I mean, it's brilliant. It's pretty foolproof. You're going to get some people that are interested because you're adding new blood to your market all the time. Like she said, she's always warming up the next, whatever was cold. She's warming it up. So I'm, I think it's brilliant. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. See, that was really good too. I would not have known. I would not have thought about the fact that we want that you want to keep the groups smaller, but that is good. Yeah. It makes what the reasoning behind that you, that you said was perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll You'll get get ones. Pers okay. Let me give you guys some ideas. Well, here's what we'll do. Here's the thing I'm going to promise you after this call, because really I felt led enough to bring a stranger on our call. <laughs> I know who you are, okay? I've followed you for a long time. Well, let me tell you this. I know who you are now, too, and I think <laughs> your system is brilliant. Um, I know that you wouldn't even know that that would be crazy that I'd bring somebody on here, but I like, I keep my people all tucked under my chicken wings. I don't ever expose them to anybody else. They find that enough on their own, right? But in my mind, I thought this is the perfect topic. They don't need to hear it from me. I was so glad that they heard it, heard it from you, and you spoke about it so well and I, I well I just appreciate it very much and I, I want to see I, since I, I've taken up your time tonight I want to tell my team really quick uh, I promise if you this is something that you really want to make work I will promise to make videos about how to make groups on your Facebook because I know that there are some of you who are going to do this you're going to be like this is my thing this is what I've been waiting for and I, I promise to help you. Let's. I'll make a post in the butterfly page asking for ideas. Now, general categories of ideas of groups to join. Don't say, "Hey, come join me in this group," because then you're wasting your time. You're all both doing it in the same group. But maybe this will help you guys get your wheels spinning. So, so, so you could be like, "Okay, hobbies," or here's better. Look at the, look at the phone book, look at the categories in the back of a, like the yellow pages or whatever and be like, okay, what do these categories fit my life? What are these things that I'm interested in? What are these things do I, you know, implement and use? And even like couponing, shopping, all kinds of different groups that you, what? Cooking. Yes. Which one does? Instapot, Instapot recipe. Oh, like Instapot so recipe food. groups. He says that one's too big, but you could find, you could find something like maybe low carb Instapot recipes or, mm -hmm. or something like that. That would be something you would be interested in. And there would be a lot of people in there and stay and the group would stay active. So, okay. That's what I vow to you guys. I will help you get this rolling. If you guys are excited, I knew some of you, <laughs> I knew some of you were going to be very excited. If you guys are okay with this, I'm going to take just a few minutes to pray over us. Is that okay with you too, Francesca? I know you said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Okay. I'm going to start my music over. I got this music I love to listen to while I'm praying. So, um, I'm going to say too, uh, oh, wait, I got to answer that question. How do you deal with a negative group? Just, you can't, don't, that's not this, what this is for. You got to, you got to find a fun, happy group. Yeah. It's not a rants and raves page is what I'm saying. That's not what you're looking for. Gosh. In fact, I don't even like to be in those for this purpose or any other purpose. I don't like to be in them. That's why uh, diseases are a tough crowd. Like the people that could really gain the most information from us. They're not really, they're, those support groups are so they can talk about how sick they are. Okay. If you are on my call tonight and you have a prayer request, I know I never open this up and I'm not going to pray individually over prayer requests, but if you want to share it, um, 
I, I'm going to ask like I asked on our page the other day while I pray, you can just um, say your prayer request, but please say it as though it's already been answered. So I'm glad that this has happened or I'm glad that I'm excited because of this, that type of thing. I don't ever want to give um, word. I don't ever want to say anything that is the opposite of what the spirit of God inside of you says. And so I say that you're healthy. I say that you are influential. I say that you are um, financially blessed and secure. And so that's what I want you guys to talk about tonight. If you're going to put your prayer request out there and I'm just going to pray over us. We're going to see what God does tonight. God, we thank you for your presence. God, I thank, th thank you for the way that you overwhelm us with your goodness. Lord, I'm so grateful for my team. I'm grateful for the friendships that have come from this crazy business that we do. God, I just want to pray uh, special blessings over Francesca tonight, over her family, over her team, Lord, that, Lord, you would show her how anointed her teaching is, that you would begin to just speak that to her. She has an easy nature and she's easy to listen to. And we just want to, we thank you for her. We thank you for her humble spirit and her willingness to teach. Uh, I've got this heaviness um, on my heart tonight about uh, something about marriages, but I don't know what that is, but I just want to speak peace to anything kind of, uh, um, any kind of negative negativity going on in your marriage right now. I just want to, I just, all I see is just speak peace, peace, peace. And I don't even know this scripture. I don't know where it comes out of the Bible, but God, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. God, I pray your Holy Spirit presence into whatever they are dealing with, whatever has been um, bombarding their, ma their um, marriage. God, I thank you for new angles and perspectives and ways to look at how we can network with people and how we can make new relationships. I was even thinking while we were talking about all this, I was thinking you never know when you're going to meet your best friend or your soulmate when you're in these hobby groups. God, thank you for expanding our minds. I just really want to pray over you guys tonight to watch your words. I mean, he's laying that on my heart really thick. I don't know if somebody's battling with something right now, but watch the words that you say. Don't be talking negative about yourself. Don't be cursing your life by saying you can't, you don't. Even just like, I'm too broke for that right now. Somebody, I heard somebody say that the other day at the movies, and they were like, man, I'd like to, but I'm just broke. And I was thinking, uh, manifester. God, thank you that you have given us power. God, thank you that you are a God of infinite power and you, your spirit lives inside us. God, I thank you for your healing anointing over hearts tonight. Feeling brokenheartedness. Maybe that's, I'm still feeling that marriage thing, but I'm feeling brokenheartedness in, in like something like struggle. I thank you, Lord, that you are, uh, you are a healing balm in those situations. I'm going to challenge you guys tonight. I, like you don't have to do this. You can cover up your camera if you want to do it and you don't want people to see you, but I, I'm just going to encourage you to put your hands out in front of you tonight and Take your business and just say, Lord, I give my business to you. It takes courage to do that, I know. Lord, I give my business to you. And God, you expand it to its fullness. God, in the way that I am in relationships, God, that you would give me new creative ideas, that you would bring people to my team who need this opportunity, who need these products. God, I lay it down before you. 
that you would supernaturally expand my business. I'm going to tell you when you start working in um, the, the methodology that Francesca uses, God's going to give you multiple opportunities to be there for someone. God's going to give you multiple opportunities to create relationships. As you expand the network, I think it's so interesting that some of the people that are on my Plexus team that have now weirdly become some of my best friends are people I met at weddings before I did Plexus, but they didn't know me at all. Live in different states, different parts of the country. I'm just imagining right now taking tent curtains and spreading them out wide. Spread your pegs out wide. Say, God, give me this territory. God, let you shine through who I am. Lord, that you reign. And that people can see you all over me and everything that I do. Hmm. You know, you guys know how sometimes I'll get on here and I'll have, I'll say, oh, I feel like this. I feel like that. And I probably sound crazy, but sometimes I'm like, I feel a healing anointing tonight. It's an interesting, I don't know what it is and what word to put on it, except for I just feel victory. And so, like, victory, if you need a healing, <laughs> victory definitely reigns. If you want to make some proclamations over your business, over your relationships, over your marriages, over your other job, maybe you have another job and you're like, oh, I just need God to move. Victory. Put your heart out there tonight. Lord, I need a victory. God, show me what victory would mean to you in this situation. God, move in this situation. God, come in and be the God of influence. God, that I would have supernatural favor. God, I call on the angels. That I would be walking in angelic power. Supernatural favor. God, we love you and we thank you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna close this up. I, I pray, I pray all of this and I, I seal it up with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to do because I felt like um, any of these messages that have come in, the prayer ones, I'm going to print them, not print them. I'm going to copy them over and I'm going to put them somewhere like in the notes of my phone. Um, but if you guys wouldn't mind going up and even doing that yourself, if you can, so that you can know who you're praying for. Some of you I see have messaged me privately, which is fine. Um, weirdly, I've never heard in, uh, when I was praying, I've never heard tell them victory until tonight. And, uh, and now even after we're finished praying, I, I feel like he's still trying to talk to me and I'm, I'm talking on top of him, but I feel like, um, I feel like he was showing me like everything, everything falls under the umbrella of victory. What do you need? Like, what do you need? What do you need? When there's, he was telling me victory, like usually I'll hear that there's a healing or something. You guys have seen that, that have been on my calls. And, um, so when I wasn't hearing healing, I was like, okay, I mean, rocking on. But when I heard victory in my mind, it was one of those times I paused. It was like, what does that mean? Um, I mean, I know what it means, but like, I don't know what to tell them that it means. And I felt, I feel he's still talking to my heart about, you know, we're going through an anointed season right now. There's going to be supernatural increase in favor on so many. Um, don't kill it and squash it with your words. Make sure you're not canceling things out by using negative words. Don't talk about diseases. 
Don't label yourself with anything. All these things, all these different areas. And this season, the season already has me really excited. And when he was like, victory tonight, I'm like, well, all right then. So whatever it is that you guys, prayer, prayer requests that you have, you don't have to tell them to me. You don't have to tell them to anyone. But I'm just going to say, uh, I feel I confident to say that uh, you should claim victory over those areas of your life where you need a victory. That would be your prayer request, right? So um, thank you so much. Very, very much, Francesca. We appreciate it more than I can say. Um, I know that um, I, I vow to help you guys. That way you don't get your phone blown up. <laughs> Francesca, she's like, this is not the new friends I meant to make. <laughs> Every time I'm on somebody else's team call, I always think, here we go. <laughs> but I appreciate you very much. And I appreciate you guys not bombarding her with questions. If you have questions about this, it's something I can help you with as well, at least to the extent of what I, I think, unless you really scare me with the questions. So far, I think I can handle it. So um, I'm going to glance at these, make sure somebody doesn't have a question that I need to answer. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm gonna see if there's anything private message to me that I need. Okay. Okay, you guys are released. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the recording off.